Welcome to part one of my superhero landing tutorial. I'm going to go over every aspect of how I created this VFX sequence, including using Premiere for editing, Nuke for compositing, and Blender for some 3D VFX and a digi-double. I'm also going to show you a lot of other free or almost free resources that you can use to speed up your process. Part one will be all about prep and planning and executing the basic landing and part two will be about adding the ground break VFX and putting the final touches for that extra little secret sauce let's jump into it once you've got an idea I always start by pre it out within blender so you know all your camera moves all your shots everything beforehand before you shoot any footage because the planning stage is the most important part. First, you'll need a digi double of yourself. Normally, that would be a lot of work, but there's this awesome app called In3D that'll make you a digi double in about five minutes. If you uh, run through my tutorial about how to create one with the app, you'll have a fully rigged version of yourself. Link in the description. Next, you'll want to hop into Blender and start getting creative. This part can be very janky. The idea is to just figure out where your cameras go and where your character goes from point A to point B and then render out some quick shots using EV to put into an edit. Next I shot the footage. I used a portable green screen from Amazon that costed 50 bucks. I have a Sony A6500 which I used to film it and I borrowed a Atomos Ninja external recorder to get higher quality footage. It's very important to get the highest quality of footage you can for a green screen because if you don't, your key will not look good at all. I lit myself with an LED light from the left side to frame my face and I displayed white on my TV to give a little fill lighting on the other side. A strong directional light helps you tie your plate in with your CG so I do that almost every time. I also shot my footage in 60 frames per second so I could speed ramp it to slow-mo as soon as I hit the ground. Welcome to the nuke portion of this tutorial. I'll show you how to denoise, key, and roto, but I suggest you do a beginner nuke tutorial because I won't be showing you the basics of how to use nuke. I'm using nuke non-commercial because it's free. First I'll drop my plate in as a frame sequence. If you would like to follow along, I've provided a few assets on my Gumroad for you to download. I've included the plate as frames, I've included the previs as frames, and a previs blend file with the cameras, the digi double that I used, and a previs ground break. Check that out in the link in the description. First, we need to set up our project settings. So, with your cursor in node view, hit S, change your frame range to the correct frame range. Looks like it did that when you drop the footage in and then change your format to match your footage format which would be HD 1920 by 1080. Now let's denoise. We've got a lot of grain here so search denoise, make a denoise node and then drag this analysis region over over a spot with even noise. Now I like to turn my denoise amount up to 8 That'll smooth it out quite a bit. We can also go down to tune frequencies, turn on process very low frequencies to get rid of some of the splotchiness in here. And then we can turn on temporal processing to smooth between multiple frames. So if you copy your plate, make a vector generator, plug motion into that node, and then turn on temporal processing. Turn on frames to blend to three, and that should smooth it out a little bit as it plays back. It's not perfect because this is pretty grainy footage, but it should be better than before. Next, let's key out this green screen. Make a key light node. Turn on the eyedropper and screen color. Zoom in here. And Control shift alt drag to select an area in here. It will average all the colors inside this red box. Now hit A to view the alpha channel, and it looks like we've got most of it keyed out. Adjust the screen gain to get rid of more of that gray area. 
one thing I like to do is drop my viewer gamma so I can see if there's any holes in my key, which there are. So go down to screen mat and drop clip white down until those holes mostly go away. Turn your gamma back. Next, let's key out this area. I don't want to crunch the key any more than I have to. So we can just duplicate the key light node and make a key mix node, which does exactly what it's called. It mixes between two different things. Make a roto node, shortcut is O, and then roto the area that you want to key in a different way. Soften that by selecting it all, hitting E on your keyboard for the feathering, and then look at your second key light node. If you increase the screen gain, you can suck out all that extra stuff. Then look at your key mix node. Looks like it's mixing the wrong way so hit shift X to switch the inputs and now if you turn it on and off you are keying out this small part with the second key light node. Next let's limit our key to just the area where the green screen is. So make another roto, select the key mix, hit M, it'll make a merge node, change that to mask. Now if we just view above this we can select the roto and then draw our shape to limit it to the edges of the green screen. Now if you view the mask part, we have just the key where the green screen is. We need to roto his arms and feet, anything that goes outside of the green screen, back on because we can't key that part. So I would start with this foot, make another roto node, select the mask and the roto, hit M, and then just view your original plate for speed and start rotoing this leg. And you can turn up your viewer gain so you can see things better. Now just start rotoing this foot. Use as few handles as you can to show the shape. Close that off and then go through and roto the rest of it. It's automatically set a keyframe here, so if you go to a frame where it starts moving, just scoot that over and it'll set another keyframe and interpolate. And for stuff like this, you'll want to turn on motion blur, which is over here. Select the roto shape and click this button to turn on motion blur. All right, I've rotated everything that goes outside of the screen, including this hand here, etc., etc., all the way through. Fortunately, I stopped moving at the end, so it's pretty easy and you don't have to use as many keyframes. So let's uh, set this up right. We need to despill the green out of our plate so we don't have a bunch of green at the edges. So select this, hit M. We're, we're scooting over our key and then we're going to mask our plate out with the key. Change this to mask. I'm holding control and then clicking in the middle to add extra dots. So now we've got our key over here, we've got our plate over here, we're masking our plate with our key. And as you can see, despill is necessary. So create a hue correct node, drop it into the pipe here, and then if you drag this selection box around, remember it's control, shift, drag, you can see that um, this yellow line shows what color you have selected. So click here in green suppress, drag this all the way down to the bottom, and green should become gray. Looks like we still have some green here, so if we select this part, it's not really being suppressed that much. So if we drag this handle over, we'll be suppressing more of that green. Another thing you can do is turn up mix luminance, which will make it so you're changing the hue, but not the value of this green color, which is great. Now if we go back to the mat, we are sucking all the green out of the edges. Now let's render this key out so we can work with it in real time. So hit W to make a right node. Let's navigate to where we want to save our file. Make a new folder, call it something good. Now we want to copy that folder name, paste it at the end, 
type in percent 03d that'll give it uh, frame numbers and then dot exr at the end hit save turn channels from RGB to RGBA so you get the alpha channel and then change your compression from zip to PIS because it's smaller <clears throat> and everything else should be good to go just hit render make sure your input frame range is correct and hit OK now select your right node hit R and select that image sequence open and now we have an image sequence which we can play back in real time next I'm going to bring in my uh, previs that I did at the beginning and I'm gonna use that as reference for when I want to speed ramp my footage so it looks like I have myself landing on frame 50 so that will be my landing frame so first I want to time offset my footage so that I'm landed on frame 50. I want it to not just not only be landed but be fully at the low position before I go back up. I'm selecting a number here and then hitting the up and down arrows to change it back and forth. Next I want to speed ramp this so I come in fast and end up being slow-mo. So let's make a time warp node. We're gonna set a keyframe on frame 50 in the input frame and then we are going to go back like four frames and then just select this first number here 46 and then use the arrow keys to bring it down to like 40 38 or something and change your filter to nearest so it doesn't try to blend we need to go to the curve editor here and it smoothed our curves we just want it linear so select all your keys right click interpolation linear now if you start playing from frame 46 coming fast end up slow I might make that even faster so go back to your dope sheet and select this key and just move it over a frame and then yeah that feels good we can also delete the first keyframe in the curve editor select this keyframe and right click interpolation before linear and then it'll just continue to the beginning at the same speed now it's kinda choppy because for one it doesn't have motion blur so we can fake some motion blur by making a vector generator node and then a vector blur node in vector blur UV channels select motion and turn motion amount to 1 now we've got some approximated motion blur for his movement. Let's render this played out for use with Blender. So just duplicate your right node, plug it in down here, and then we'll just change it to keyed RT for read time, and change that for the folder name too. Everything else can remain the same except we do need to click create directories down here so it'll make the folder because it doesn't exist now we want to set our frame range it looks like the first useful frame is frame 48 so we can just make a time clip node above our right node set the frame range start to frame 48 frame range end can stay the same and if we view that and then go to render it'll use the input frame range and that'll be correct and then we can render that out let's put our plate into blender and set up the 3d scene with a camera and a digi double and do some lighting first let's import images as planes you have to enable the add-on if it's not available grab your retimed plate also click animate image sequences shadeless material settings and that should do it go into shaded mode and let's make sure this is playing back but we need to offset the animation to start at the right frame so if we go into the shading tab the correct frame to start would be frame 48 so we'll just set start frame to 48 
And then if we go back to our layout tab, 48 should be the first frame. Now let's set our pivot point to a spot that would be more useful. So tab into edit mode, move your plane up until the pivot point is at the middle of the front foot. And then we'll just rotate this on the X axis 90 degrees. And now we need a camera. I'm going to import my camera from my previous scene because I already set one up that is at the angle that I want. I have three different cameras for my previous scene. One from the top, one up close, and one a little further back for all three shots. They're all parented to this empty with a track two constraint. So if we hit zero, set our camera to camera 001. This will be our close up camera. And then we want to import our digi double. My digi double is at the right scale. He's five foot nine and a half or whatever. So I'm going to scale up my card until my head is about the same size. And I'm going to line my front foot up with the front foot of my digi double. So now the task is to pose the digi double so it lines up with the plate from camera view. The important parts are getting the hand and the feet in the right spot because we're going to use the digi double to cast shadows. Let's go to frame 50 because that's the frame at, on which I'm going to land. Let's go to the animation tab. We want to set one view to be the camera view. The other view can be the 3D view and we can start posing our digi double. Now that we've got our digi double posed, we'll be on frame 50 and select all your bones, uh, right click and insert keyframe, location, rotation, and scale. According to my previs, this shot should start on frame 25 and end on frame 100. Now let's animate the digi double flying in. We use the master control bone here, go to frame 25 and just send them way up in the sky. Let's turn on auto key. Send them way up in the sky until he's just a speck. And then let's make sure that these keyframes are linear. So control master, select those, and right click interpolation mode, linear. Our camera isn't quite lined up anymore because it was old previous animation. So let's animate this empty to finesse our camera. Let's go to frame 51. We've got some keyframes in here already. Turn on auto key and let's drag this empty back so it lines up with our digi double, framing them up nicely. Go to the next frame, make sure that's also good. And then go to frame 44. It looks like our empty is way off. If you go to side view, you can just grab it and line it up with the digi once again. Go to frame 25 and do the same thing. Next, we need to do a secondary pose for the period of time when you can see him coming in right before he lands because this pose looks incredibly awkward. I want to do a pose that is pretty much the opposite of this where this arm is pulled back ready to punch. I'm looking down and his legs are more straight. I'm going to go to frame 47 and set up that pose. I recommend taking a photo of yourself doing the poses that you want for reference or going online and looking for reference because it's easy to pose a rig in a way that just wouldn't work. And also keep looking at your camera view for how the pose looks from camera. You can go farther with this and add a few more key poses earlier in the animation. Next I'm going to add a ground plane and put a texture on it to make it look like a cracked asphalt texture. One thing I want to do though is if I hide my digi double, this plate is looking like it's getting pretty distorted. So go into object mode and I just want to rotate this plate towards me 
so it aligns with the camera. Now let's hide that plate and we're going to add a plane. Scale this up a bunch, scale it on the x-axis. I'm going to grab a, a material from Quixel Bridge which has a lot of awesome free photo scan stuff. Let's grab this dry cracked mud texture and make sure your export settings are set to blender then hit export. Now go to your plane, material settings and apply that dried cracked material. So let's go to the shading tab and fix all the things. For one, in our texture coordinate area I want to use a UV channel. Tab into edit mode, go to top view and unwrap project from view and then I want to scale this texture down which you can do by click and dragging over the X and the Y and typing in like 0.1 or something for more smaller scale texture. It's a little bright for asphalt or roadway so if you go to this diffuse area and add an RGB curves node just drag this middle part down until you've got something a little bit darker. It also came in with a clear coat turned on. Turn that off and this roughness texture should probably be plugged into roughness and not specular. Now turn specular down a little bit. I also want a set of displacement which by default is not going to work. If you go into cycles render view mode, first of all we need some lights so let's change our background color to be a sky texture and turn that brightness down to 0.25 and then to make displacement work we need to go to the modifiers tab add a subdivision surface modifier change it to simple and turn on adaptive subdivision it looks like it's pushing it up in general so let's go to our displacement settings and set our mid-level to 0.5 that'll make sure it doesn't push it up also, make sure that your mesh hasn't been scaled up, so Control-A, apply scale. You can also turn up your displacement scale to a little more if you want a little more bump. You might notice that my back foot is off the ground. That's because I had to move it up in order to line it up with my plate foot. So to fix that and make this shadow work, I'm just going to go into my plane edit mode and subdivide it a few times. And then I'm going to zoom in here, grab a vertex near my foot, turn on proportional editing with O, and move all this up till it touches my foot. And then that shadow will be working. Next, I'm going to do some lighting. So let's go back to the layout tab. Let's put our view so we can have an image viewer over here and then let's load in our plate. Now we want to match this lighting as closely as we can using the digi-double to compare. So let's go to rendered view, turn off all of our overlays, and first let's tweak our fill light. I'm just going to use the sky light as a fill, which means I want to turn the sun intensity to zero, and I also want to make it a little more bluish so I'm gonna change my altitude to 1500 I'm gonna turn my strength down to like 0.1 now I'm gonna add in the left light that's raking across so let's split our view one more time and then I'm going to turn on overlays in here and add a light area and then I'm just going to move it over out of screen move it up a little bit and then I need to turn up the intensity quite a bit if you zoom in on the face that'll tell you how close you are so if we just move this back a little bit we can get that raking look and that's okay as you can see it's shining on the ground which is not quite what we want so if we just move it back increase the brightness even more maybe even 1500 and I think I could move it back even more let's make that a little bit yellowish and then we're going to add in the bounce light that is my TV let's put this light into a lights collection and then we'll duplicate it and move it to the other side 
this one can be a little closer and a little larger and then we just need to bring the brightness down quite a bit and we can mess with this beam shape which will make it more of a narrow beam so it doesn't hit the ground it also makes it lighter so if we just turn this power down to like 10 that's looking okay beam shape could be even narrower and then let's make this a little bit bluish and maybe on the greener side now if we turn that light on and off we can see how it's affecting I think we can make the skylight a little bit dimmer 0.05 uh, next I'm going to set up the three different passes we need so we can piece this together in comp we need to render out our plate from our camera view as well as our digi double and then we need to render our ground separately with the shadows from the digi double so we can put the plate on top first let's organize this scene a little bit I'm gonna take my ground plane name it ground and then I'm going to hit M and put it into a new collection called ground and then I need to take my digi move it into the main folder Oops. I'm going to take my plate, hit M, new collection, call it plate. We're going to use view layers to render out multiple passes at once. Our first pass will be called ground. And all we need to do is turn off our plate, grab the digi layer, right click, set indirect only. Now we've got shadows, but no digi. And we need to go into the render settings go to film and set it to transparent so the background doesn't get rendered then let's make a new view layer we'll call this digi we'll just set the ground to indirect this time and we will not render our plate then make let's make a third one call it plate and we can just turn off the ground and the digi and render only the plate. One more thing I want to do is set up my depth of field before I render. So select your camera, go to depth of field and turn it on. And then your focus object can be the empty that the camera is pointing at. Also turn your f-stop to 1 for a little bit less defocus. Now let's set our render output. I'm going to use file output nodes, so go to compositing, and we need to render our render layers as separate image sequences. So make a file output node, plug image into image, open up properties, set it to RGBA, float half, and zip PIS lossless, because that's the smallest file size. Now you could set up the naming for the files and the path yourself or you could download my auto path script there's a link in the description to that tutorial and you'll get this set render path button the way it works is select your file output node make sure your current view layer is the one you want to render ground and then hit set render path it'll set it to a folder based on where your blend file is and name it according to your blend file and your view layer to set up the other two passes, it's as easy as duplicating these nodes. Set this to Digi. Set your view layer to Digi. Select the file output node. Hit set render path again. And then one more time for the plate. Change it to plate. Set render path. Now that's all set up and all you have to do is hit render animation. For render settings, I've got max samples set to 256 for speed, denoising is turned on, and motion blur is turned on. Alright, I've rendered out my passes and I'm back in Nuke with them, as well as a background image that I downloaded from Unsplash. First, let's piece together our passes. Take our ground. We want to merge our plate over that, so select the ground and the plate. Hit M. And then we need to swap between our plate and the digi double in these motion blurred frames so go back one two looks like we'll swap there so make a dissolve node 
Let's look at our digi double. On this frame, it'll be plate. So set a key on a witch. Go to frame 49 and switch to digi double. Now, if you play it back, you should see a digi double coming in and it should become the plate. Next, let's put in our background image. Now, this is a little tricky because we have a moving camera. So let's export that from Blender as an Alembic. Select your close up camera, file, export, Alembic. Make sure selected objects is checked and hit export Alembic. Let's import that Alembic camera. Let's grab our background plate. First, make a sphere. Plug that into your plate. Make a scanline render. Plug that into camera. Make a project 3D node. And you're going to project from your camera onto the sphere. We're going to need to make the sphere bigger because it's rather small right now. So make it like 100. Now we're projecting our image onto the sphere. We need to frame hold our camera though. So let's frame hold that on frame 52. And now we should get it tracked in. We have a bit of a problem though because when it pans up, we run out of image. I'm gonna fix that by tracking the beginning in 2D to fake it. So on frame 51, we're going to switch to a 2D track. First, let's merge this over our plate. And then on frame 52, let's transform our image to be in the spot that we want. So on the Y, we want to move it up until we are at street level. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to cover that up with a giant cool explosion of dirt and debris. Now let's make a switch node, plug the switch in after the scanline render and then plug it in to the original image. On frame 51 it will be going through the scanline render and on frame 50 we will be going through the original image. We also need to reformat this image because it's way bigger than our plate. So make a reformat node, plug that in here and then turn on preserve bounding box so you don't lose any edge pixels. Now we need to do a fake pan to match our camera. So set a keyframe on frame 51 for this transform. And then we will go back to frame 25, scoot our image way down, which looks like that. Very strange. And that's because we need to speed ramp it in. We want that pan to pick up speed as it goes. So go to the curve editor and then let's make this curve smooth with H and we need to exaggerate this curve even more. So control alt to add another key in here and we'll just drag this over so it starts off really slow and only picks up speed later in the shot. Let's see if that works better a little abrupt there so just adjust this curve until it feels nice and smooth you can also select keyframes and hit F to frame it for more detail to control that looks okay now we've set up our background and we've got all the elements here except the destruction which will come later but not, everything's not sitting together very well. So to bring all these elements into the same space, I'm gonna first work with my plate. I need to contrast this up and crunch the black to make it look more punchy, like my CG render. So first, make an unpremolt node, make a gray node and a premolt node. Sample black point and set black to somewhere in here. Now we don't want to totally black so just drag this value slider back so it's not affecting it quite fully that seems okay and then let's make our gain a bit higher and let's drop our gamma 
and then alternate gamma and gain to increase contrast. That looks a little bit more punchy. You can also make a saturation, turn saturation up a bit. Now let's make our plate just a little bit warmer over here because this light hitting my face is pretty warm. So I'm gonna make another grade node and just shift the gain to a more orange color. But I want to also limit that. So make a roto node, plug it into the mask and draw a shape over here and feather that out. So there's some fall off across the shot. And then let's mess with the background because it is a little bit funky. And we should also defocus it. So after the switch node, make a defocus node and turn that up until it seems about right. There's a lot of things wrong with the background image. For one, the black point is weird and it seems pretty dark. So let's first make a grade node. We want the defocus after the grade node actually. We'll make an unpremolt and a premolt. And then we want to set our black point to something in here. And then we want to gain this whole thing up. Make it a lot brighter. Let's go to the beginning of the shot to make sure we're not making it too bright. Seems okay. And then we'll just mix down our black point so it's not totally black. Or we can go in here, mess with this slider to decrease how much it's pushing it towards black. I'm feeling like my plate could be even a little brighter. Let's make a grade up here and mess with the color of the background. And that's feeling better. The final thing I'd like to do is add some camera shake. So select your final node, the camera shake, and we want it to happen right when he comes in to land. So go to frame 51 and set your amplitude to zero. Fixed scale can be 1.1. Set a keyframe on amplitude and rotation. Two frames forward and then set, we want to set our height amplitude to higher than our width. So set height to like 55 and width to 25 and we'll try rotation at 2 and then we want this to fade off over like the next 10 frames. So go 10 frames forward or so, set everything back to 0 and let's see how that looks. Seems a little vibrate -y. So let's turn our height amplitude up even farther and then turn our frequency down. Turn our frequency down even more and then you can randomize seed until you find something that you like. A couple final touches would be to turn on motion blur in this transform node and then you'll see a an ed, a bit of an edge around my plate that can be fixed with an edge extend put that inside your premolt setup and turn off premolt apply be aware that this can add some artifacts in spots also you can animate your defocus to ramp down at the beginning so all the buildings are in focus for my final, I added more animation at the beginning of the shot for the digi double, so he didn't come in feeling all rigid. That's it for part one of this tutorial. Tune in next time for how to do the ground destruction.